And welcome in to In Game Live Prime Time, hour number one of our two hour extravaganza. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sheriff, and Taylor Mathis up until 10 p.m. Eastern Time. At least Taylor will be for the first hour or so as we watch, cover, and more importantly, bet on the world of sports. Ah, it's a beautiful thing. A couple of NBA games had won this afternoon over in Europe, and we got a few others tonight, including LeBron and the Lakers in action. Got a, a couple of college basketball games, some ranked teams. It's been a rough, rough week for ranked teams. You got to be crazy to bet on a ranked team although naturally i am tonight on illinois and then a slew of uh nhl games to get to plus we got our same game parlay we got the wetzel black cloud we got a little sports jeopardy for dave hour number two that doesn't pertain to sports we'll see how big of a celebrity dave uh, or how many celebrities dave really knows yeah a little little pop quiz i mean who does more in two hours in less time than we do. What's going on, uh, Dave and, and Taylor? Dave, how are you tonight, bud? We'll start with you. What's on your betting your plate this evening, my friend? I'm good. Um, this is exciting. I had <clears throat> no idea that this was coming, and I love uh, trivia and questions and things like that. I don't know how many celebrities I know, but we're <laughs> going to take a shot. We got uh, Vancouver and Pittsburgh You used to live over. next to Jack Ham. What are you talking about? You grew up, you you and Jack Ham were like buddy buddies, we right? Did. Or uh, was it uh, yeah, Ham yeah. it was, right? Right? Yeah, 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 Jack Ham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bradshaw threw me a pass and stuff as a little there kid. Go. I got to go to the uh, Franco Harris Lynn Swan roast, you know, practice at the Civic Arena with the old time Penguins. Uh, we we knew a lot of people. So, yeah, we, we were celebrity in Pittsburgh. I don't know what you're going to hit me with. This is great. You got me on the edge of my yeah. seat. That's good. Edge of my seat tonight with the Canucks and the Penguin game over. Six and a half. Um, that's our favorite play so far today. And it's 3-1 after one. So things are looking nice. good. They're not good for It's 3-1 Canucks. So this is the best team in the West. This is one of the best teams in hockey. They were dogs again today. Odds makers are not yep. catching up with this. This is one of those ones where you see it without the line. I told Peralt this morning, that's a pick em game. Open it up. It's Pittsburgh minus 125, minus 130. So uh, Vancouver. And then the Celtics are playing the Bucks. Scott Taylor, I don't know if you heard, but this guy up in New England, he's no longer the coach. He's, he, he's done coaching. So, so like, it's heard been a long that. day in Boston. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I just saw it. It was just, I, I, I hadn't heard much about it, but. Belichick's done. So I'm rooting against the Boston teams today. They've, sometimes Ooh. you just got to – It's a, we're right – we're going Bucks. And tonight we're going Knights against the against the Brewers. So that that's where I'm at early. All right. All right. Taylor, what I want to know from you first and foremost, you know, I know you got a lot of great plays and you got a lot of great winners, no doubt, You're sitting on a lot of good winners for us tonight. But first and foremost, you know, Dave's got his little outfits there. I got my opposite picks. Uh, the thing I love about you is you got your bet with your boyfriend. I, I'm assuming he's still your boyfriend. Oh, well, maybe not after last weekend. Not my so boyfriend. did you, no, he's not my... do you or do you not have a Chicago Bears tattoo no, right now? Am not... I allowed to ask that? <laughs> it's not her boyfriend. Yes. Let, not that, my boyfriend. Just... Thank you. Tell God, us. Oh, so, okay. My bad. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Not my boyfriend and no Bears tattoo. Many people going Woo! into that. Everybody, I had so many messages from people being like, are you nervous today? How are you feeling? What's mm. your thoughts on the Packers Bears game? But I told Dave when we were on earlier that week on Thursday, I was not that worried. And going into it, I still was not that worried. I had confidence before the season started that I didn't think they were going to go over the win total. And I had confidence at the end of the season when it came right down to the last game. I have no tattoo and I won't be getting a tattoo. So I'm feeling great about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your real boyfriend is happy about that as well. So it did come down to the last game, though, right? And if it did, did you hedge it all? Did, did your fan book account or your DraftKings or whatever account no. you have, did you at least put a couple shekels on the Packers or no? I uh, Nope. Or the I Bears, actually. All my money, all, all my money on Packers' money line last week. I was all in, went all for it, I and I didn't down. hedge anything. I, I yeah, always double down. Good. I'm confident in my pick from the start. I don't like to, you know, go back on my word, I guess. How do you hedge a tattoo bet anyway, Wetzel? Like, what would you, what does that even mean? How did you, how would you even do that? Well, I mean, who's paying for the tattoo? I don't know if that was ever established. So at least I, if oh. I'm going to get a tattoo, I better be in there the sure I'm not paying for it. Yeah. So. Uh, I, all right. 
Well, yeah, we don't have to worry about one, seven point five say... on Taylor. That's all. That that's no all that matters. Seven point five on me. Seven point five. We're good to go. <laughs> so, do you like the Packers this week, T? Is it did the Packers carry it over? Well, who are the Packers playing? I can't remember. Hold on. They're playing. They're playing my Cowboys. Oh, that's I, right. I do not. I don't like the Packers at all this week. Uh, the, the seven is interesting. Um, I feel like Jordan loves maybe getting a little overhyped because of this big win that they just had over the Bears, but I still feel like it's the Bears. The Cowboys still show up really well against teams that are below 500. The Packers weren't that good really in this regular season. The Cowboys are at home. I would take the Cowboys. I don't know if I would lay the seven points with the Cowboys though, but I do like in a parlay Cowboys money line and CD lamb to score a touchdown. Mm-hmm. All right. A lot, lot of great storylines uh, this weekend, right? Between uh, McCarthy going against Green Bay and the quarterback situation with the Rams and Lions game and, and then, you know, everything else. Flacco may be winning this week and then facing Baltimore the next week. So NFL's got to be pretty happy when it comes to, uh, to storylines. So we'll get to it all over the, over the next hour or so. But I do have a same game parlay that starts in about five minutes. So we want to get that in before the break. So a little SGP time here on the grid. All right, uh, not that many late games, but that, that's okay because I actually like this one. This is not a forced one. It starts in about five minutes. Uh, we're going to go to the ice, St. Louis and the New York Rangers. Uh, I knew they were an under team, but I found something curious about the St. Louis Blues, which we'll get to here in a second. All right, St. Louis is at home. Since the coaching change, they really have played really good hockey. They're getting odds, plus 136. Rangers basically 500 over the last month or so, despite all the hype. A typical New York overrated Rangers team. So I'll grab St. Louis plus the 136. I'm going to go last team to score. Plus 115. If I think they're going to win, chances are pretty good they're going to be the last team to score, and I'm getting odds on that. Um, How about under 5.5, guys? Um, It's adjusted. The normal line is 6.5. I'm going under 5.5 plus 126. Rangers, a decent under team with their goaltending. Uh, But St. Louis, the number one under team in the NHL, believe it or not, the St. Louis Blues. I would not have guessed that. Uh, and then no goal. This is the one that's going to bump the odds up. No goal in the first 10 minutes, plus 110. Add the four pieces together, and we're getting over 9.5 to 1 on that parlay. Dave, we'll start with you. You like that one? Um, in a word, no. That means no. I like the Ra- <laughs> I, 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 in a word, I like the Rangers tonight. No. I think the game could go uh, over. Um, over. I, I, I don't know what part of it I, I, I can even say I like. I might like opposite of all of it opposite of all all right we'll see uh we'll see i don't know how you like the rangers i don't know how you like the over it's 200 teams but we'll talk about it when we come back in game live over to uh, uh, prime time on the grid fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing 300 million gross a year in sales. 
kiss it, man. We don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. Little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BB, we'll get we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah, Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the Buck. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, your mind. Big Twelve. Who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done at Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, has the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Cullett's the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. What did you think when you saw... Uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down, those two plays. When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars had, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression this season. Not a major one, but he, he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game live prime time hour number one. My, uh, if you see that puff of smoke in the background, that that's my same game parlay going up in smoke. Rangers scored a minute into the game, a minute into the freaking game, and I already lost my same game parlay. I mean, you talk about the black cloud, uh, unbelievable. How is that possible? How can you score a minute into the game, St. Louis? Ugh. All right, big news out of Boston today as uh, Bill Belichick, uh, I don't care what they're calling it, he was fired as head coach uh, Warren Sharp on uh, on Coast to Coast this afternoon uh, with our boy Scotty talking about who's next in line for the New England Patriots head coaching job. I'll always believe that Bill Belichick was one of the best ever. Um, And the only sad part about it to me is when you look at this tree, the Belichick tree, who really is great off of that Belichick tree? Who really has done anything off of that tree? And when you look at other trees around the league with some of these coaches that have been places for two decades or 15 years and established themselves, and then they, they their uh, assistants go elsewhere and then flourish as well, it's like, okay, that guy was a damn good coach, got his guys ready, was doing things the right way. It was because of him. People were following in his footsteps. Everybody who's left New England and tried to replicate anything that like Bill Belichick and this team was doing there has not had success and for those reasons it's like okay well maybe this just was just a weird uh oddity where belichick was better than most guys but maybe he wasn't the best and 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 a large part was because tom brady was there and ernie adams was there and these guys couldn't take what they learned from belichick and flourish elsewhere uh, you know, it's, it's kind of tough, though, to judge who's successful and who's not. You know, if, if you want to say successful in that they got head coaching jobs, they did. You want to say they're successful based on did they win Super Bowls, the answer would be no. But he has gotten a lot of guys head coaching jobs. So it's kind of weird to figure out who's successful uh, and who's not successful. But that said, Belichick out. Uh, Taylor, we'll start with you. What, what do you think? What's your? I didn't think it was going to happen. I mean, I did think it was going to happen. I shouldn't say that, but I just can't believe it happened. I guess that's the best way to describe it for me. The poor guy, six Super Bowls. He's had two years of not being in the postseason after six Super Bowls, and he gets fired. Man, you talk about, you know, what have you done for me lately? Uh, your thoughts on Belichick out in New England, Taylor? I think if you watch the press conference afterwards, though, Although he's getting fired, I feel like we all saw this kind of coming. And he looks pretty happy that he's going to be heading out of New England. (laughs) He doesn't have a messy quarterback situation anymore that he has to deal with. Hopefully he'll go somewhere else and 
you know, be able to start a new regime for himself under a different NFL team. I think at the end of the day, it's the right move for him. It's probably the right move for the Patriots, and it's time for them all to move on. What do you think, Dave? It's weird because when you know it's coming, you just don't know when. You listen to somebody who's been a fan of the team and, like, you know, somebody like Matt was – it's half his life. He was his coach for half of his life. And he was all bummed out about it. As a guy who grew up as a Steeler fan and watched the Steelers lose to Belichick and them come in and win, and then being in a book for a couple decades watching – Needing against Belichick and the Patriots, it's like, okay, this is uh, this is just the next phase of whatever it is. He ain't done. There's no way he's done. He's going to coach somewhere. That's mm-hmm. what I took from it. Like he's he's wants to get that record, whatever it is. He wants to go prove that he can do it somewhere else. I don't know. He maybe got nothing else to do. But Scott, he is definitely not done coaching. <laughs> yeah. You know, if he goes to the Chargers, right, and he goes to Herbert, which seems to be the the best quarterback on an open team, right, whether it's Washington or Atlanta, Carolina, he's the established one. Does he ever get rid of that that, that black cloud that's following him that he couldn't do it without Brady, and now he goes to the Chargers, oh, he can't do it without Herbert. Let him go to the, the Carolina Panthers and turn around Bryce Young. Or let him go to the Washington Commander Redskin Potatoes and, and try and win with the Sam Howell or, or you know, the Atlanta Falcons or one of the other teams that have bad quarterbacks. You know what I mean? It's like the Chargers make the most sense to get the win record and have success soon, but is he concerned about the, the legacy thing? Or is it just oh. give me some wins? No, he's going the, – the guys that we had on – we had a guy on today on the show, Fitzy, who works for the Patriots. He said Atlanta's the favorite. That's where everybody the buzz That's is what I said last him. night. I like Belichick right? to go to Atlanta personally. Why? What? what? I don't because I get it. That team, that team is basically only a quarterback away in reality. I mean, yeah. look at their backfield. Do you have Arthur Smith who did not use Bijan Robinson at all? in the correct way this year get a guy in there like belichick who can turn this team around he's got a lot of the pieces they really just need a quarterback to really get that offense going and i think when you had a coach in there like arthur smith who was all over the place and did not know what he was doing somebody like belichick could really turn things around for the falcons yeah and you know the other thing taylor and davis they don't have a superstar Right? And isn't that what the, the, the Patriots are all about? Outside, obviously, Brady, but never really having a super, super, superstar. Corey Dillon for a year, Randy Moss for a couple of years. But, you know, they got a lot of good players. You're right. I mean, he loves to run the football, right? You got two, the two headed monster in the backfield, really a three headed monster. Uh, you got three guys, you, you know, good pits, uh, the, the tight end. Maybe he views him as kind of like Gronk. Uh, in London, the wide receiver, good, not spectacular. I mean, it does kind of fit the mold, the easy division. They got the eighth overall pick. They, you know, that they can maybe move up and get themselves a quarterback, maybe go after Kirk Cousins. I mean, it, I, I like that too, Taylor. I said that last night. I think that makes the most sense, especially knowing they're mm-hmm. in the NFC South, which is so easy. I could see Belichick too. I would see him staying on the East Coast compared to going to the West Coast too. He just seems like an East Coast man to me. Yeah. Oh, so we'll the fans see. in Atlanta will love them. That would be great. That would be one of those ones yeah. where it seems like an odd fit city wise, franchise wise and ownership wise. But maybe he already knows that's uh, that's the buzz. That's that's the buzz. I heard not Washington. Atlanta's the favorite. And listen, they're talking about him coming to Vegas because they're making, you know, they've tried to make the Patriots West with McDaniel. And they brought a couple guys out. They think, bring him in here, groom Antonio Pierce, let him be the defensive coordinator. He already has it under control. It's a two-year process, maybe three. And Pierce steps into the job. Raiders, Belichick in silver and black with that logo. I can't, I, I whatever logo he's wow. in, you two, I don't, I can't believe what I'm going to see. It's, it's, it's going to be one of those ones where you're going to be like, what is that? It's going to be weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got the tuck rule, you know, with the Raider tie-in. You got the Falcons with the Super Bowl tie-in. 
You got his his time with the Giants, with Washington tie-in. I mean, Carolina might be the, well, Carolina Super Bowl, if you want to go back that far, right? Um, There is always some kind of tie-in to him, no matter what team he seemingly goes to. McCarthy loses to Green Bay this weekend, okay? He's going to Dallas, T. He's going to Dallas. (laughs) Jerry says I've had enough. too. I'm fine. Wow. McCarthy, I if if we don't win at least the if we don't make it to the NFC Championship game, Mike McCarthy should be gone as well. Add him to the yeah. list of coaches Bill leaving. I, I think he needs to be Dallas. And see, there you go, T. That's your next coach, Bill Belichick. Well, I'm not against comes that. in. <laughs> that's, that's Do you option. imagine that? No. Listen, if Parcells did it, right? I mean, if you live it here on the East Coast, you know, if, if Parcells can go from the Giants to the Patriots, which is a little bit of a rivalry, but then to the Jets, which is a huge rivalry, and that, and, and then to Dallas, um, which I'll never forget Bill Parcells. I really did all those moves never as a Giant fan. But Belichick to the Dallas Cowgirls, uh, that, would be, that, that would be interesting. That's true. Um, I tell you what, if they lure to lose this week, Either McCarthy or Dak has got to go. You cannot bring both of them back and sell the Dallas fan on being able to win with those two. So, all right, we'll look at the games when we come back in game line. Prime time continues. fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. Right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing 300 million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. A little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BB, we'll, get, we'll get our BBB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done at Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Cole is the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace and he's so smart. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> What did you think when you saw uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down, those two plays? When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars had, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression. Not a major one, but he he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. Yeah, congratulations, but the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All 
Democrats in game live prime time here. Hour number one, Scott Wetzel, Dave Sheriff, and until 10. Taylor Bath is joining us until nine. Uh, we'll get back to the football stuff in about uh, 15, 20 minutes. A couple of quirky little things that occurred again this year, which we'll try and find out uh, who will fall into those categories for next season. We'll have some fun with that in about 15 minutes or so. But in the meantime, we do have some hockey. We do have some NBA, some college basketball. I know, Taylor, we got two uh, NBA games that will be starting here in a little while. Uh, you got some plays on, on both of them. Dallas uh, host of the New York Knicks. They're resurging the, the, the undefeated uh, New York Knicks since they made the big trade with R.J. Barrett being sent to Toronto. And then we got uh, LeBron and the Lakers uh, hosting the Phoenix Suns, which we all thought at the beginning of the year would be a pretty good matchup. Now it's with right. two mediocre teams. But uh, give me your thoughts on both those games and your plays. All right, I'll start with the Dallas Knicks game. I'm going to go with the Knicks. Current starting center, Isaiah Hartenstein, over 10 and a half rebounds. Hartenstein has been great without Mitchell Robinson on this roster, especially on the glass. Through his last five games, he's got numbers of 20, 19, and 14 boards. He has the wingspan, and he has the size and can play above the rim on the move. Dallas doesn't have the size tonight to get to Hartenstein. Derek Lively is likely out. Maxi Keebler looks like he is questionable. And Luka Doncic is ruled out. The Mavs are one of the worst rebounding teams in the NBA. And tonight it's going to be even worse. So I think Hartenstein is going to continue to go off and go over that 10 and a half rebounds mark tonight. All right. Uh, I like that one, Dave. Any thoughts on that one before we get to the second game? No, keep it going. Keep coming with the with the place <laughs> in the basket. I don't, I don't want going. to interrupt the flow. I have nothing to add there. Go. <laughs> my favorite play, of course, we're going to look at my sons, who, as you just said, Scott, we're getting Ooh. a game now with two teams that are really reeling more than anything. We expect them to be pretty good in the West. I'm going to go with Sun shooting guard, Bradley Beal, under 18 and a half total points. The big three in Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Beal are just struggling to integrate together on the court. Beal has played in seven consecutive games after missing 24 of the Suns' first 30 contests. The names on the back of the jersey, they only go so far. At some point, there has to be more to go off of with these players than their prior successes through their basketball careers. The big three playing together in only six games this season Beal's only gone over this number in just one of those. I'm fading Beal in this spot where the Lakers are on an uptick, winning two straight, and the Suns are the opposite, dropping two big games in a row to the Grizzlies and to the Clippers. Beal, he's just not getting it together tonight. I'm going to go under 18 and a half total points. And I would also parlay that with the Suns' money line because it is their last chance in the regular season to beat the Lakers or else they're going to be 0-3. Uh, so those are, my, those are my NBA plays for tonight. All right. Uh, that, that is something I forgot. Yeah, they lost to them twice already. Tough to yep. sweep a team, right? That, that's basically the same level as you are as the Lakers and Suns. And really, the Suns should be a lot better. But we'll just say they're equal at this point. It is tougher. I do like Devin Booker in the game. You know, they, FanDuel's got it at 24 and a half. And, you know, they probably have that a tick lower since Beal and Durant uh, and Booker are all playing for a rare, rare time. But I still can't help but think he's going to get 25 points when everything is said and done. So Booker really? over 25 or 24 and a half. Yeah, I do. I, mm. I do. I think, you know, I think he wants to prove he is the man. You know, come crunch time, close game, you know, a few, four, five, six minutes left, whatever. Is it going to be KD? Eh. Is it going to be Beal? Definitely not. I, I think it's Booker's Booker. time to like say, okay, it's my club. And uh, he could have like 18 and still get over 24 and a half in a fourth. Mm. Okay. I, I, I'm a, I'm leaning against you a little bit because I just think Devin Booker has not come out and really shown that he's the guy on that team, even though he should. He's hit that under right now in four out of his last five games. So that makes me a little nervous. Uh, if you look at it even further, I think he's only hit the over two times out of his last 10. Something crazy like that. He hasn't been very good scoring lately. The assists is what where I've looked at his overs more so over the last few games. It's right, okay. You we'll can see. disagree with Scott. This, 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 yeah, is, this is part the of the show. Yeah. You're not going to be on the hesitate. second hour of the show. That's it. You're off. <laughs> Only one hour for you, Taylor. <laughs> just, just listen. Just, 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 right, just fire it out there. If you disagree, it's fine. Opposite picks, black cloud of the night, all these different things. That's what we do on the show. I mean, we can't all agree all the time. That's what makes the whole business what it is, is that there is disagreement. So 
I'm just surprised. Like, I don't know who's playing worse in the West than the Lakers. It's one of those ones where where you look at this and this is like, this is the game the Suns are supposed to win. And yeah, right. Right, like this is this is that game that they'll they'll fix mm-hmm. it. They catch the Lakers at a down time, and then tonight what will happen is the Lakers will win by ten, and you'll be like, where are the Phoenix Suns? Where are, is the team that was the second choice in the West? Where is the team that they put together and brought to to compete and beat the Nuggets and and, and be the team that takes to the finals? I don't know where this team's at, so. This will be one of those ones where I think there'll be a lot of opportunity in game because you know they're going to be down and then you know they're going to be up. I just don't know who's going to win at the end. Yeah, you know, speaking either, of the teams not say. showing. Yeah. Speaking of teams not showing up, uh, have you guys seen the Celtics score? 73 37. Milwaukee what? leading Boston. Wow. Final seconds of the first half. 73 to 38 now. They are down wow. 35 points. What? They are the strangest team, and I'm a Celtic fan. They are the strangest team to bet on, to watch, whether it's props. You know, every time I bet on Brown, he goes for 10 points. Every time I don't, he goes for 30. Same thing with Tatum. I I, I, I just cannot figure this team out. I, I don't think anyone thought they would be down almost 40 points to Milwaukee, but – that's the Boston Celtics. I mean, it, it, they're such an enigma that they are just so frustrating. And no matter how good they play, I never say they're going to win it because they always fall apart in the postseason. You can get them now plus 29 and a half. I mean, I, I don't even what you do. They're, they're wow. down 75 38 at halftime, 37 points. Normally, I would Crazy. advocate and say you should take the 29 and a half. But this might be the night that they go, eh. Don't even worry Throw about it. it. We'll just right, like we'll we'll play the backups and we'll lose by thirty six. We'll get them again. Let them let them run away with this. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like if I if if you had to do it right now, Taylor, which way would you take? Would you lay twenty eight and a half or take twenty eight and a half? I really don't know. I'm not sure what I would go with either. Part of me says take it. I, I, I kind of feel like leaning towards, like you just said, maybe they just throw this one away. It's too far gone. We'll just, we'll give the Bucks this win and move forward. They play tomorrow, the Celtics? Let me see. They do not. They're oh. off until Saturday oh. against Houston at home. Okay. So there's no reason to call off the dogs, but... How is that? You know, I, I probably would take it because it's the NBA and everybody makes yes. a run. Right, so, yeah. so even though you're still going to be down seven or eight with the points that you're getting versus the deficit you're sitting on, but I, I, how does that happen, though, Dave? I mean, how you're playing a team that you know you could very well meet somewhere along the line in the postseason, right? You would think some egos and some little one umbership should be on the line here. Hey, we want we want to prove to you we're better than you, and you don't have to win. You don't even necessarily have to be competitive and lose by double digits, but to be down 30 plus at halftime, that's what's wrong with the NBA, right? This game is what's wrong with the NBA. These players just don't care. They just don't care about the regular season. Simple as that. It was 41, 23 after the first quarter, it was done after the first quarter. They almost got doubled up in the first quarter. So a 41 point first quarter by the bucks, and then a th- followed up with a 34 and 16 points only. I had to double check. It's 16 <laughs> points only for the Celtics in the second quarter. I don't mean to laugh at people holding Celtics plus four, plus four and a half tickets. Yeah. But, man, you're going to need a lot more points than that because that one you could – I never advocate ripping up the tickets before. When you go to the book <laughs> and you get the paper tickets, I used to see people right. do this all the time. In the first half, oh, this done. Rip it up, rip it up, and then something happens. Giannis gets hurt. The Celtics come roaring back, and then you got to go in the garbage can looking for the tickets. I, I, I've done it. I've helped. I've Dumpster helped diving. guys in the gar. It, it's the worst. Taylor, you've been really? in the books here in Vegas. Scott, you've oh, been in yeah. the books in New Jersey, New York. You don't want to yeah. go in those garbage cans ever. Like you got to, you know. <laughs> This 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 yeah. stuff in it, you know, you gotta piece together the ticket. You play it like a jigsaw puzzle. We put it together, tape it together, get the barcode on it. Would they it catch that? 
date, if some guy realistically, if he if he ripped it, we'll say twice, by right? once and then again. Well, we'll just be fair. He rips it once, and he finds out it's actually a winning ticket, and he tapes it together, and it goes across any bar that might be on the ticket. Would the book cash that? Absolutely. Oh, I've done it. Yeah, I've done. People yeah. have left a ticket. In uh, a pocket or something, or in a magazine when they took it home, and it went blank. Right. And there's a trick to bring back the ink on a ticket, uh, really, to bring it back and cash it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's that's an that's an industry insider secret. I'll tell you guys, you know, off the air or off in person, air. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Strictly off the air. <laughs> you can't you can't you can't give everybody that one. They got to come in the book and see that right. one in person. It's like David. You know, Copperfield. It's like putting put together somebody right on you know, a magic act. They bring you a blank ticket. Hey, I know this said San Francisco to win the division, but it's blank. Give it to me. We fix it. Done. Cash it. Really? Mm-hmm. Ooh. See, that's, that's pretty nice. stuff. You, you got you to gotta sign off for B&B to get that one. All right, Dave? You're not giving that up. Definitely not. <laughs> All right, more coming up. In game Wi-Fi. fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing $300 million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much. Man. They're crushing it. Little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BV, we'll, get, we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done in Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, has the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Coates, the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> What did you think when you saw uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down, those two plays? When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars had, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression this season. Not a major one, but he, he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Ah, 
Welcome back. It's in game live prime time here. Hour number one of our two hour extravaganza. Don't forget, follow us on Twitter at Sports Grid, at Sports Grid Radio, at Sports Grid TV. Three separate feeds. We send you all kind of uh, highlights of the shows, uh, highlights of game action throughout the afternoon and evening time. And then uh, don't forget to download the Sports Grid app if you haven't done that already as well, no matter what kind of phone you have. And uh, again, follow all the hosts, follow the shows. You can watch on TV. You got all the trends, all the stats. They give out picks as well. So feel free. It is free. The uh, Sports Grid app. I right, want we'll some fun here in a second uh, with, with some NFL stuff, which is uh, quirky how the NFL is. It really is. We'll see if we can find some winners for next year. But before we do that, just one last uh, look at the uh, the board here. Uh, Dave, we'll start with you as far as uh, hockey or anything else is, is concerned. Getting a bunch of goals naturally in St. Louis and the Rangers. I already lost my same game parley as the Rangers scored a minute or so into the game. Um, a lot of overs hitting uh, so far tonight, but it's a, it's a good night, it looks like, Dave, for if you're an over player, for sure. For sure. Toronto and the Islanders, 3-3, three, three. second yep. period, another one there. Um, Anaheim, Carolina, 4-3, second period, looking at that. Seattle's my team right now. I've been, like, just yeah. kind of playing a crack and playing a crack and, you know, we were on the other night, said I like him against Buffalo, it's been working things sometimes hockey's just like baseball when you get on a team and things are going yeah. good you kind of just stay under the radar keep using them in, in in your plays that's the one i'm trying to keep an eye on hopefully it goes over too but i mean three one in the second period and washington's a dead under team more often than not so um and then pittsburgh and vancouver it's three two after two Penguins are right there. Uh, it's, it might be worthy of an in-game play because this is one of those situations where I think next goal wins. If Vancouver scores the next goal, they're going to win the game probably 4-3. And if the Penguins score the next goal, it's 3-3, and they're going to win the game 4-3, maybe even 5-3. So over six and a half, I'm kind of talking into existence, Taylor. You know, sometimes when you got to just like <laughs> talk a bet yeah. through and then yeah, right, and then it kind of comes true. That's what I was – you see what I was doing there. I was just trying to get that Manifesting, done. manifesting the winning yeah. bet, exactly. Manifesting. Manifesting, like that's what that's called. You speak it into existence before it happens. Four see? syllables is too much for, for uh, sports. Teaching you something new, dude. Yeah, you got to keep it two, <laughs> at, two at a time. Maybe three, maybe three with <laughs> – you get the four, Taylor. You're over our head here. Uh, we this, can this elevate. We can elevate the vocabulary <laughs> here. We? Nice job, T. I like that. Manifest. You're welcome. You're welcome. See? Manifest. Yeah. Uh, I, think that's a I will say thing. this, Dave. I, I'll give you one guess on uh, which dopey side I'm on with our favorite, beloved San Jose Sharks back in action tonight. Right? Uh oh. Taking on the Montreal Canadiens. What'd you do? You, uh, you laid it with the Canadians, didn't you? I laid it with the Canadians. Oh, They're down three to one to San Jose. Freaking San Jose who couldn't beat the peak of high blindfolded. I mean, how what what is it about this goofy team that whatever I do with them, they do the opposite. No matter what, it, it, it's amazing. This team is going to lose 60 games this year. I'm going to bet them like the 20 times that they win. It, it, it's just, it's unbelievable. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, this is, Taylor, this is one of those ones where, like, you know, when you know a team that gets you every time. Do you have a team, like in the NFL, that you just know, mm -hmm. like, as soon as you go on them, they lose, or you go against them? and they win like is there is there a team for you like for me for a long time it was the falcons i couldn't get the falcons games right so i just stopped talking i stopped looking at them i stopped using them in contests is there a team in the nfl team that you look at and you go you know what i should probably stay away from like that vikings game or maybe i i, I shouldn't bother with the the saints game well i'll say i don't know if i don't bet them because i don't like win when I bet them or if I just don't bet them because I find them what's the word almost like invalid or irrelevant the Saints Ooh. are one of those teams I just feel like they're <laughs> irrelevant to me sometimes to look at a lot of a lot four, of teams four syllables again you know, four right. syllable thing again. 
Go ahead. I just think some of them are a little irrelevant to me. So there are definitely teams that I don't look at yeah, as much to bet that. on. Uh, but the teams that I stay away against, there are a couple in the NBA. The Nuggets being one of them, like I said, they messed up my whole parlay last night. And I feel like every time I take them, they magically lose to teams that they should not lose against. And mm-hmm. I, I got to mm-hmm. agree with Scott, too. Every time I take Celtics player props, they never pan out. Never. I right. take Jalen Brown yeah. over his assists regularly. I don't know why. I feel like I always look at that, and I lose every time. So Jalen Brown and me, we're, we're not friends in the betting world. It's amazing, that, that goofy team. All right, I'm going to throw this in real quickly just so people like, can brag about it when it hits. Uh, I'm going to grab your Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, plus 250, down 3-2, heading to the third. And I'm going to grab okay. the Devils in a parlay. Down 3-2 against Tampa Bay, heading to the third, plus 390. That gets a 16-1 to parlay. Oh, so boy. Hopefully. He's done it again. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's see if that could, uh, well, you know, that'll pay some bills. That that'll pay. I was some, gonna say that'll that'll, that'll fix some of those problems, those other bad decisions like betting on right. against the sharks Scotty Barnes. again, right? Yeah, this will get you or right the up. Sharks. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, quirky little thing, guys, in, in the NFL, and it happened again this year. It's it's amazing. It, it really is. And you think every year there's no way, no way, no way, and yet every year it happens, and that is. Uh, 19 out of the last 21 seasons, a team in the NFL has finished in last place and then the next year finished in first place. This season, it was the Houston Texans, which in a million years, I never would have predicted that they would be the team this year. But it happens every single year. So here are the eight last place teams. I I know where I'm going to go, but if you had to pick one, or two, you know, where where's the last place team from this year that's going to finish in first place next year? I'll, I'll start. I'll give you guys a chance to kind of mull it over there. I, I think it'll mm. be the Cincinnati Bengals um, with Joey B coming back. Uh, as long as they can re-sign T. Higgins, uh, you know, disappointing year this year. They finished in last place. You know, Browns and Steelers and, and the Ravens all get make the postseason. They'd have to take overtake the best team of the AFC record-wise, Baltimore. But if I'm going to go somewhere, I'm going to say that the Cincinnati Bengals will be at least one team that's going to go from last Ooh. to first. Other than that, I don't, you know, it, that's a... I don't know we can put that screen back up there, Matt, but it's – I don't know where else you'd find a team. Uh, the Chargers, maybe? If, if oh, Kansas I got City. One. I got one. You got one. Three three I, I don't want – okay, so I got one in the AFC, one in the NFC. The AFC okay. one is obvious to me. It's Tennessee. It, they, they're, they're going to Houston. With Will get Levis? the first place schedule. Listen, the, well, I don't know. They, they, they may make a move. I have no right. idea. But, you know – I think he's good just enough. The, right? The volatility of the division – the lack of a team that has double digit wins, although Houston has 10. So, but I think it's it's not that big of a jump there. And listen, if the Bears do the right thing and get the right pieces, that division, really Detroit played great. Detroit is, a, I think, a really good football team. But man, an injury or two in the Bears, things go right. I think the Bears is the one in the in the NFC. I don't want Washington. I don't want Arizona. I definitely don't want Carolina. So I, none of them. Patriots, please come on. They're so far away from turning it around. I don't know. Is it is you? You got one T. Like, did I steal your thunder with the Bears? Were you thinking the Bears yeah. for real? I I was thinking the Bears for real. I I will say. The only reason I was cheering for the Packers this past weekend was just because of my bet. If the bet did not exist, I would have been going for the Bears. I'm originally from Chicago. I got to support my hometown team. And I do think the Bears are, they're close. They're close. They just, they've got to do the right things. Uh, I'm interested to see, do we think that Justin Fields stays in Chicago? It looks like it's leaning towards no in most people's minds after that last game against the Packers. But I, I, there's a lot. Of, there's a couple of things to work out, but I do think it's possible that they could get to first in the NFC North. But they'd have to play their cards right along the way. How about this? If I ask both of you fifty-fifty bet, so no odds, 
it will happen again or it won't happen again. Dave, where are you betting? Oh, it'll happen again. I bet the yes. Yeah, you're that sure, yeah? Okay. Well, I, Taylor? I, 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 I would bet I the I yes because no. You would bet no? Okay. For me, no. How many years did you say it happened, Scott? 19 out of the last, what, 20? 21. 19 and 2. Wow. It's amazing. I went to 19. I don't even care what it is. <laughs> it snowed here in yeah, Vegas right. today. Anything yeah. is possible. Just, you know, I mean, two. it yeah. snowed here in Vegas. You tell me something's 19 and 2, and I got eight shots at the 19 side? Yeah. Give me that side. I don't even care what it is. Done. Finished. All right. I like that thinking. All right, next one. 34 straight years, which is amazing again. It's the beauty of the NFL. That at least four teams that didn't make the playoffs one year made it the next year. 34. This year you have six new teams. Prominent teams, but they didn't make it last year. You had Cleveland, Detroit, Green Bay, Houston, Rams, and Pittsburgh all made the playoffs this year, not last year. So the question is, who are going to be the four non-playoff teams this year that's going to make it next year? So they are the non-playoff teams. I think it's tough to kind of limit it to only four, to tell you the truth. And to me, the tricky part isn't who's going to make it, which we'll get to here in a second. It's who's not going to make it then. But I would go Cincinnati. Bengals, Jazz. I would go Chargers. Which two, Taylor? Jags and the Bengals. Those are yeah. eyeballing right. it off of there. Right. That's what I would go with. Yeah. What do you think, Dave? You said 34 years in a row. 34, 34 years. years in a row. Four teams, not one or two. That's amazing, isn't it? When they expanded the playoffs, don't forget, they added another playoff Well, that team. too. Okay. Yeah, that too. But... I said yes on 19 and two. Give me the 19. 34 years right. in a row. Um, I don't even, you, you had me at hello. You had me at 34 years in a row. I mean, uh, uh, it's definitely going to happen. There's no, that's definitely going to happen. I don't know. Right, I think I would bet question, over. Though. Here's the question. Now, uh, Jack uh, and Matt put the other bracket up. So if you're going to have four new, you're going to have to take four out. And this is where it gets to be difficult. Who are the oh. four teams that aren't making the playoffs next year? Oh, Baltimore, yes. San Fran, yes. Dallas, yes. Buffalo, yes. Uh, Kansas City, yes. And Philadelphia, as th- 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 bad as they were, they made it this year. So, yes to them. Maybe the Texans. You know, oh. maybe, dare I say it, Dave and I's Dolphins and Steelers. Yeah, we'll take a no. look at that in, in, during the break, and then we'll come back and try and figure out the four teams that aren't going to make it next year. In Game Live, Pride Time continues. fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's all a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing 300 million gross a year in sales. 
kiss it, man. We don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. Little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BB, we'll get we'll get our BBB inscribed. Yeah, Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the Book. That tells you how good this league is, Jeff. Your mind, Big Twelve. Who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done at Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Cullis, the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. What did you think when you saw... Uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down, those two plays. When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars had, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression. Not a major one, but he, he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Yeah, congratulations, but the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game live prime time. Wrapping up hour number one. Boy, a fast hour here. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sheer, Pan and Taylor Bath. Just having some fun over the last couple of minutes here, trying to figure out some of these goofy NFL trends that hit again this year. And the latest one: what four teams are going to make the playoffs next year that didn't make it this year? And because of that, it's happened 34 straight years. Uh, that means we got to take four away if we're going to add four, right? And that's, the, to me, the more difficult uh, part of the equation there. Uh, what, what do you think, Mathis? Have you come up with four teams that won't make it next year that made it this season? Four teams that won't make it this year. All right. I, I would go Steelers, probably the Browns. Sorry, Dave. Ugh, gosh. I'm, I'm, trying to, yeah. I'm trying to think who else was on this list of who's on there, who's – in right now and put the bracket on the there, there you go. go Steelers Packers Texans Texans yeah I'm leaning Texans and then lastly the Browns yeah what about you Dave well it's uh pretty obvious that you thought of Steelers first I was going to say first. Steelers <laughs> but I wouldn't have said them first I would have said them last I think the importance That's of right. the order how you say it you know, that means a little something. I think Texas, I think Rams, um, maybe Browns, Bucks. Bucks are going to make the playoffs again? Come on. That's a and, good one. And then, that's a good and one. then yeah, Steelers. That's true. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then Steelers. I think the AFC and the NFC South, the volatility there has been obvious. And they're all one away from being 4 and 13 or 9 and eight which is enough to make the playoffs so yeah i don't think the steelers situation at quarterbacks like did it worked out no can you play cloud graphic before we go no taylor's not going to see it that's fine i want taylor to see the black cloud graphic just i think I, i've it. seen right. it i've seen it just just okay. Okay. yeah all right. Seen it all right all right so he's got taylor, power lock on uh, any quick pick lock pick of the night Cleveland Money Line. There smarter to be on sports grid. Welcome in, in-game 
Live Prime Time, hour number two of our two hour extravaganza. Scott Wetzel and Dave Sherapanda joining us until 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you very much. We got Cam Stewart in about 40 minutes. We got uh, Black Cloud coming up here in a couple of seconds. We got hockey. We got NBA. Uh, we got college basketball. Great game tipping off. Uh, well, I said great game, but a good game. Uh, Michigan State and uh, uh, Illinois, in which uh, the Illini, small home favorites, interesting enough. And then we're going to play a little game with Dave, a little pop quiz. Let's see how well he does his Pittsburgh history tonight. So we'll get to it all. Before we get to the Black Cloud, a little hello to Dave, and uh, let us know what he's got the, his uh, shekels on tonight, Dave. Hello, sir. Uh Whoop, what? There we go. <laughs> Got to introduce Dave before we get to the cloud first. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hello. Good to see you, sir. Hour number two on a wacky, wild Wednesday, whatever you want to call it. Play the black Thursday. cloud. We got to get this thing quickly. Let's go. Hit it. Let's go. Black cloud time. All right, uh, tip it off here in just a couple moments. Pretty good basketball game out of the Big Ten. It's been a rough, 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 rough week for ranked teams. Uh, we're going to do no favors for Illini fans because they're hosting Michigan State, laying only two and a half. Line was three and a half I saw this afternoon. Then it dropped to two and a half. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? Uh, boys in Vegas is dyslexia. You know, it, it's kicking in here. They, they got it backwards. That that two should be an eight, or they got it upside down. What do you, you got uh, Illinois at home. They're eleven and three. They're impossible to beat at home. They're two and one in the Big Ten, and then you got goofy Michigan State with Tom Izzo, who could never win another game uh, for the rest of his life, and I'd be perfectly happy. Uh, nine and six, and he's one and three in the Big Ten. And I'm getting Illinois, which is oh by the way, ranked tenth in the nation. At home, at basically pick them odds. Really, I don't know how <laughs> Illinois loses this game, Dave. Give me, give me the Illini laying two and a half. I don't know why I dropped from three and a half to two and a half. Tough to find out in colleges about kids not playing. But listen, you you can put the peak a high in Illinois uniforms, and I'm betting Illinois at home and basically pick them odds against a, a nine and six Michigan State team that really is not that good this year. Oh what my. Um, listen, you, you broke the black cloud, um, uh, oh, last, last time out, right? No. Yeah. Thank you. Enough. Thanks for nothing. Scotty Barnes. 12 oh, that points one. Last I, night. That's, I forgot about that. Yeah. One. I was thinking of Calgary yeah. the night before Calgary, Calgary the night, the night before, before we did hit. Right. Yeah. Okay. So hit no hit. Maybe this will hit, but to be perfectly honest, I like Michigan state money line. I the, the, one of really? two things is happening here. Yes, one of two things is happening. They got you and baited you in on the short number, okay? You lay it, and Michigan State wins outright comfortably. Or, Osmakers don't know what they're doing. Vastly have Michigan State overrated, and this line should be four and a half or five, and Illinois wins by close to double digits. So, for your sake... I hope it happens. I don't have any action on it myself, but just looking at it, that's the that's the global picture from my point of view. All right. So is this a reputation pick, though, at Michigan State? Because you look at their wins this year. I mean, <laughs> Southern Indiana, really? Alcorn they not good? State, Georgia Southern, Alcorn State. Oakland, yeah. Stony Brook, Indiana Stony State, good. your Penn yep, State. Indiana. I mean. Sycamores. Not exactly I mean, who's who of college basketball here. Not not exactly, but you know, don't underrate uh, a couple of those teams there, Scott. You know, I mean, that, 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 oh, yeah, that Southern Indiana team's that, tough. Yeah, yeah, tough. That, that Oakland That's team a tough squad really right good. there. That's yeah, yeah, that they yeah, beat them right. out of the gate there. Yeah, I don't know. You saw what happened all week, right? The number. Yeah. Those short numbers, those teams look better, their reputations, all of it, and then they go and they lose. So most of those, though, were road teams. I think you got the right side with the home team. Okay, good luck, Scotty. That that's a, that's all I'm saying. I'm I'm just I'm worried for you because Michigan State's probably going to be leading at halftime. You know, and then you're going to have to you know get Audit and all that other stuff. Just trying to help you have a nice, smooth night. That's all. That's it. That's it. 
Is it possible that the line or, or, or yeah, the line is affected tonight because of what's happened already this week? I mean, let, let's face it, it has been a, just a horrible week for ranked teams. And then you throw in Miami, which somehow or another lost at home to Louisville, which is just <laughs> awful again this year. I, I mean, it, I don't know how that, that may surprise me more than all the others, to tell you the truth. Uh, forget about the ranked teams. They're all playing halfway decent teams. The Lions right. weren't like 15. You know, most were within uh, one to five point spreads, right? So none sure. of those to me yeah. were shocking. It's just that they all happened to occur. You know, w- would they move a line or maybe importantly, w- would betters b- look for like, okay, it's going to be one of those weeks. It's a Thursday. You know what? Three straight weeks of, uh, of upsets. Let, let's find yeah. the, what's the upset going to be tonight. Would they lower that line a little bit or, or betters bet Michigan State just because of what happened earlier this week? If you know your customers and you know they're going to do it, yes, you slide it down maybe a half a point. I mean, just to see, just to be off market a little bit and see see what the play is. Um, again, it's getting into conference season. I think you have to be very, very careful laying points, even when it's a short number. You know, you have to be very, very careful. And, like, on that one and a half, I mean, it's worth laying the money line a lot of times than it is laying the two or, or the two and a half. Yeah, it's only another point. Yeah, sometimes those, those mm-hmm. fall. Those are no good. So I think sometimes it is worth laying the extra juice to get the money line so they can just win by one buzzer beater, foul, something like that. And you you feel more comfortable doing that. Yeah. You always, you know, and, and I always say, Dave, I tell my folks on, on the podcast, you can risk the same. You know, if you're a hundred dollar better, just to make it easy, and you're willing to risk 110, obviously to win 100, right? Well, you you risk that same 110 to win 90. Then, that's all. W- win ten dollars less, you know, or or right. maybe fifteen dollars less by betting the money line right. rather than laying the one and a half, because th- there's no worse feeling in the world to having your team win and you're laying one or two and, and you don't get the cover or one and a half, right? I mean, I. The agenda of that happening, which does happen, you know, a, a decent amount of times versus saying, right. well, I only won 85 and I, man, I should have won a hundred. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. You know, you start your sentence with, yeah. I only won. It's a pretty good sentence, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yes. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with only winning. That's that's I only won. Yeah. Stop stalking. Collect. That's correct. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, we got a bunch of hockey games. Got a few starting here uh, in a couple moments, and then we got a bunch of others that were already underway. We'll see if we can find some in-game line numbers on that we can put some shekels on tonight right here on The Grid. fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid quarterback at quarterback we're gonna lay some juice we're gonna have some dog prices and we're gonna go right in the middle because i don't know what they're doing to me they're in the complete rebuild Kev. go run 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 that's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot so right now he's a little bit more over money but it's hovering right around the winner of this game will be the division i don't care if they win because all we care about is the money baby the money pro football today it's smarter to be on sports grid the Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing 300 million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. Little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BV, we'll, get, we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? 
Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done in Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Coates, the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. What did you think when you saw... Uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down, those two plays. When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars had, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression this season. Not a major one, but he, he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game live prime time here. Hour number two, Scott Wetzel and Dave Shear fan watching some NHL, little NBA, although there's really not a whole heck of a lot to watch. We got two blowouts, including the Celtics getting annihilated now by the Milwaukee Bucks. What a, what a joke. And then uh, a couple of college basketball games that tipping off, including Illinois lane two and a half, which I do still like against uh, Michigan State. But good news as uh, I got the Devils uh, in my little 16-to-1 parlay, Devils and Pittsburgh Penguins, Dave. I got the Devils tied at three. They were down 3-2. Are they leading, did you say, or are they actually still tied at 3-3? Because they just scored to tie uh, at 3-3. I guess it was no goal. It said 4-3 on my score app <sighs> thing, and then it says 3-3. Three, three. So um, Killing me. I jumped the gun right. a little bit. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't know. But the Penguins are still down 3-2, 12 minutes left in the third. I got that game on. So impressed with Vancouver. Uh, just when, I, when I'm watching their games, and I've been watching a lot of their home games, they are playing so disciplined with the lead. They're doing it again tonight. They're playing a really good road game. Um, I'm, I want to say your parlay's got a shot at coming back. And I mean, all you could ask for is to tie the game. Let's hope. Right. Let's hope the Penguins score the next goal, tie the game. Then we'll live. Uh, we'll live. We'll all live vicariously through you with a sixteen to one shot, two game item, two piece parlay. That's an old school term. I love when you call it a how many pieces you have in the parlay because the kids don't know, but that's the way it used to be done. Give me a three piece, give me two piece, and we're not talking about like Happy Meals. You know, you call the guy, <laughs> yeah. take a four piece, right? You know. That was, I mean, you were maybe you wanted somebody that might have been listening to think you were talking about Happy Meals, but it was a three piece, four four piece. Nobody knows what we're talking about, Scott. Moving on, let's go. Yeah. Sorry, I got I got lost. You in really want to you, you really want to throw them for a loop? You, you tell them you're going to put a five time or a ten timer on there. Right? I remember that I used to do that with the wife. Right? Would be before it was legal. You know, she would find the notes lying around and she'd yell and scream. And I'm like, I I'm putting twenty dollars on it. I'm, I got ten dollars. It's not you know the end of the world because it's like ten x or twenty x, right? Or or five x. That would really uh, try try explain that to the kids. Now, I what, did not what know is. what that term was. I had never heard that. In Pittsburgh, and really? then I went to Penn State. I went to Penn right. State oh, okay. and met all the kids from Jersey and New York and Philadelphia <laughs> and Connecticut and all them other places. And they're like, "Yeah, five times." Like five times what? Five times, <laughs> ten times. Oh, and it, and like you said, all the notes would say ten x. I didn't. You didn't even know what that meant unless you were in the you know in the know or in the business. So. Yeah, 5x, 10x, 20x. Very simple. Very simple math. You just you had to know your times tables to be able to yeah. uh to answer the phone or, you know, send it in. That's that's funny. Five times. 
Did you? Yeah. Did the wife it, ever ask the, you what the times were? The X? No. No, just just okay. uh, I got it right or I got it wrong. It's just just the next there. You know, just no big deal. Um, it's one of the reasons why, Dave. I've I've mentioned this before. I think I mentioned it with you, uh, but I've mentioned it many times over the years. I am absolutely, positively, one hundred percent convinced that Pete Rose is not in the Hall of Fame, not because he gambled, because the one thing he did do, uh, you know, he wasn't really a stand-up guy, is that he didn't rat out on other people who were also gambling. And there's no doubt in my mind, either others were gambling or others knew he was gambling. Because, you know, the old days, right, you know what you do. You get on the phone, you call up your local Louis de Lip, and you got the newspaper open, right? You got, uh, you know, maybe some point spreads. You know, you got the starting pitchers, and you write down the lines as he runs down all the games because Pete was gambling, you know, eight to ten games a day. So he's writing down every single line. He's hanging up the phone, then he's calling the guy back, and he's got his newspaper open. This is literally a half hour, an hour. They got records before games. And where is he doing it from? His office. And what's happening? His office door is no doubt wide open, right? Managers are coming in. Assistant coaches, rather, are coming in. Players are coming in. Trainers are coming in. And there he is on the phone. You're telling me there wasn't one time in two years of him gambling, there wasn't one time he forgot to close his newspaper. He wasn't on the phone with the bookie when someone walked in. No one looked at his trash. It's impossible. It is impossible to think that no one knew he was gambling because of all the notes that you're writing down and everything like that. So I, I've told that to people. and They're like, eh, probably. I was like, no, absolutely. You cannot hide gambling every single day for two years. You can't do it. Believe me, I tried. I tried. And about every six to eight months, I'd, I'd get caught with the little lady way back when. <laughs> so, and I think that's why he's not in the Hall of Fame because they, they probably asked him, who else knew? Who else were you, you know, who was gambling with you or who knew? And he didn't rat anybody out to his credit. I don't know. A lot of times, though, think? like a lot of these uh, guys, and it's, a, it's such a solitary um, hobby or occurrence or business or whatever you're doing. Like, and for the longest time, you know, growing up, I was around people that were either like betting, moving money. That's what they called like the guys that were just betting for someone or whatever, or they were booking the games. And I just was around it and, and you know, around people that were doing it and sat in rooms while it was being done and watched guys call and then whatever. And you couldn't talk about it. Like you couldn't even talk about it with your own family. I was with, I was with a guy who I ended up going down when, you know, when I went offshore, when I went to Curacao and stuff and we talked about it. We actually talked about it today. We hadn't talked for a while. It was nice to talk to him today, but he goes, I remember when, when it felt like we had to hide in the closet when we did this. Yeah. And now yes. it's kind of being celebrated, you know, where, you know, guys that have done it or these people that have hit these crazy parlays, we're all celebrating them. It's a weird way the business has turned, Scott. And, um, you know, I don't know Pete's business, but I know when you read the stuff that he was doing, somebody had to know something. Like, it wasn't like it was He's doing just, it from the know, dugout. Women. They had records that's of him crazy. falling from the dugout. <laughs> yeah, that's that. that, that that's 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 a little bit much. Like what? I, like yeah. in a dugout? Can we focus on the game? Like, can we just need? Right. You could. Uh, come on. I mean, let's stay. Yeah. Let's see who's up in the bullpen, please. Let me get this guy loose. Yeah, yeah. You can take a pinch hit. Like, I'm not worried about betting the the Dodger game first five over, please. Can you imagine what you could do? Like back then, you only took side yeah. total and first five. You know. Right now. Oh, 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 too much. Yeah. But again, to think he had to write down all these lines and call back up and, and be on the phone when he's in his uh, office, uh, you know, an hour before the game and, and no one walked in. Or like I said, he crumbled up the newspaper, threw it in the garbage. No one looked in the garbage and saw all his notes. I mean, it's impossible. It's, it's, it's impossible that he kept that a secret. So, but anyway. Did, were uh, you a big right, I was line down guy? Were, were you were you constantly yeah, writing yeah. the lines down? Yeah. Yeah. How else could you do it? 
I'd get the lines. I only wrote I'd get the it down when I call made the, guy the back bet. Five minutes later. That was the key. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. It's a long time. And keeping long all the notes. Call. Oh, you the know, notes. And then oh. getting the number the next day when you call. Yeah, what's your number here. from yesterday? You know, plus or minus. It's all yeah. over the place. Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> that must have oh. been a pain. Must have been a pain. What do you got? Um... I don't know. Do we get we get any goals here from your Penguins? We're down to, to seven and a half minutes, no. plus five sixty. But 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 we got a power play coming. We got a power Ooh. play coming. This and be, Edmonton just one. scored. There Tied we go. Up Detroit. There we go. And yes. how about the Ottawa Senator? Or uh, how about the Winnipeg Jets plus one hundred four down one nothing against Chicago second period at home? I might do That's that. That's not bad, actually. right? That's not bad at all. Yeah. Let's go. Line. It's a lot of fun to do because you could kind of you know, place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out. I've always found that interesting. But uh, New York is one state where it's a little bit unclear. You cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote. So you're talking about an MVP award, uh, Cy Young, uh, Rookie of the Year, anything where somebody, where people at the end of the year have to vote. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing $300 million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. Little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BV, we'll, get, we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done in Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Coates, the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> What did you think when you saw uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down, those two plays? When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars have, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression this season. Not a major one, but he, he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Yeah, congratulations, but the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. SportsGrid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back. It is in game live prime time, 25 past the hour, hour number two. Scott Wetzel and Dave Shearer pan out a uh, really an ugly night if you're an NBA fan. Um, 
The, the, the Lions are embarrassing. The, the performance is even worse. Uh, every game is a blowout. There's only three. Uh, we'll start with just real quickly before we have some fun here with Dave. Milwaukee leading the Celtics 116-81. Uh, to 81. Any thought of the Celtics making a run where they were down 20 or so after one period or one quarter? Never happened. It's been a 30-point game throughout. You, you want to put the Bucks in? You can lay 30 and a half uh, down tw- uh, 35. You want to grab the Celtics? They can make them make a little bit of a run, or you just like, eh, who can be bothered? Oklahoma City, same thing against Portland, Dave. 84-46. They're up by 38. <laughs> Line on that one is 36 and a half, early third wow. quarter. And then even the dopey New York Knicks uh, going up against the Dallas Mavericks without Luka. Here's one of those system plays, right? Play on the Mavs. No superstar playing. Yeah, Mavericks leading it 57-39. to 39. And now the Mavs are laying eight and a half against uh, New York midway through the second quarter. So those yeah. for me are, are basically unbettable. You know, if there's nothing else yep. going on, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll find a way to put a bet in. But, uh, you know, I enjoy the hockey and the college basketball, so I'm not going to push it. Um, I don't know about you. What do you think? Say total agreement. I yeah, right. once a number gets out of hand, you missed it. Done. And then yeah. you can just say I took thirty, I took thirty and a half and see if it gets there. But we did it with uh, we did it with Taylor at the end of the first hour. I asked her, you know, yeah. would you lay it or take it with twenty nine and a half? And he was like, eh, just pass. Done. We don't need yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. To think that, you know, the sub, especially this late in the game, you know, you could do it earlier because you think, okay, everyone makes a run like we had mentioned, but to basically say, okay, the Celtics subs are going to outscore the Milwaukee Bucks subs. I, I mean, you know, like I said, there, there's other things going on tonight um, that, that you can put us some, some money on. Still 3-2 Vancouver over Pittsburgh. Ottawa 4-3 mm-hmm. trailing Buffalo. If you want to put uh, with four and a half minutes left there, Carolina scored again. Mm-hmm. Still nothing out of Montreal. Dogs that the Canadians are down 3-1 late third. Edmonton just scored again. Oh, Very boy. nice. Uh, gave out the Oilers regulation. Down one oh. nothing. They scored twice now 2-1. That's Jeez, Crosby just had a tremendous scoring chance. Ugh. And Demko went pad to pad across the crease and somehow did a split. Kept that puck out of there, Scott. I thought that was it. I thought that was the game tire. Instead, Demko uh, made a great play. Pittsburgh on the power play right now. Pittsburgh on the power play. Okay. So we got uh, five minutes to go. If you're going to bet it in game, you better bet it right now um, because that's either going to come off the board at some books. Right. Or, oh, Malk. Oh, never mind. Mm. <laughs> great save by Demko again. Unbelievable. Uh a one time or cross court cross ice pass. It looked like it was going in. I I had it teed up to celebrate, and Demko got across the post post and, and made the same. Oh, that was a tough one. Okay, well maybe I'll just relax and you you keep talking. Give me the trivia. Let's go. Come on, All get right. this in there. Yeah, I will say that this is where my the change in the rules for uh, the NHL should come into play. I've always said you're allowed to give up one empty net goal a game and not have it count. And this is, would be the time. You know, if you're Pittsburgh, you pull the goalie, you got a power play, now you're up two men, you don't have to worry about the empty netter. I, oh. I, I, I do believe that. There should be one time you could give up an empty net goal and not have a count. It creates more strategy. Like, I would pull the goalie here anyway, Dave. Five minutes left, right? It's been a struggle. It's not 6-5. Pull the goalie. They get an empty netter, ball game's over, no big deal. I'd, I'd rather skate yeah. seven on five or whatever it would be there, six on four, um, with that uh, empty net there versus five on four with the goaltender. Uh, you know what? I don't need the goaltender. My, my guy's got the puck, right? Why not? That's what hockey yeah, needs. You... Needs more strategy. More strategy? We need even to... Yeah, we need to be able to say this hockey coach, you're an idiot. What are you doing? You, you, you pulled the goalie. What are you... We don't get that, though. Everyone does what you're supposed to do, and everybody loses, and everybody gets fired after a year and a half. Do something different. Pull the goalie down and go, who cares? Talk about. Come on. Just, just do the trivia, the please. Get to the trivia, please. Right. You, the, we'll save the hockey rant. We'll ask, we'll ask, uh, we'll ask Cam when he comes on. Who's Vin? What? Who's right. this? No, nah, don't put Where's that it? down. Put that down, guys. Don't show that just yet. I'll tell you when to put it up. 
Oh, whoa. All right. Now, yeah. ever played Jeopardy? Might ever watch Jeopardy? You know Jeopardy, yes, right? Yes, of course. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to be Art Fleming. I'm going to really date myself. Forget Alex Trebek. I'm going to be Art Fleming, oh. the original host <laughs> of Jeopardy. Wow. All right. Uh, we're going to go, uh, Art, give me uh, Pittsburgh knowledge or actually uh, just knowledge, historic knowledge for, for 50. The question for okay. you, Dave, is uh, have you ever heard of D.B. Cooper? This is not sports related. Yes, D.B. Cooper is an actor. Yes. No, not, not, not that. You're right. He is. But not that D.B. Cooper. Think what do you uh, mean? He hijacking D.B. Was- Cooper. He was Shoeless Joe Jackson, wasn't he? In Eight Men Out. That uh, yeah, was he was. Cooper. Yeah, I love that movie. Love that movie. I tell you, if you like the movie, read the book. The book, uh, yeah, Eight Men Out, is excellent. really, really good. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, but think uh, hijacking back in the 70s. D.B. Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. No. I don't know who that no? is. All right, well, we no. can't play the game then because that's that was the easiest question. You never, I'm sure you have. He's the guy that the, that uh, hijacked the plane on his way to Seattle and then landed the plane in, in uh, where was it, Las Vegas? I think it actually was. Kicked all the passengers off, told the people, give me $100,000. I'm going to go back up in the air with, with the uh, you know all the flight attendants. Went back up in the air and then jumped out of the plane in the 70s. You this never heard really of happened? Yeah, where have that- you been? I was a little it's kid in the 70s. It was a little, I was, that we watching, have. I was watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood in Sesame Street. And <laughs> they Captain probably Kangaroo interrupted in the it 70s. with a D.B. Cooper update. But hey, yeah. D.B. Cooper? No, I was, yeah. I said I was celebrating, you know, World Series in 79. I was, I was watching Steeler football and Penguin hockey. I, I don't know who these people are. Took a plane right. up and did what? I can't believe this. Let me give you this. Let me give you this story real quick. It's one of the all-time greatest conspiracies that we have uh, outside of literally who shot Kennedy. This is like, and, and did we really land on the moon? This is like number three in our country. Who really? was DB Cooper? Yeah. So I'm getting texts this right now from years. friends who are telling me he stole a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So here's what happened. He hijacks a plane on its way to Seattle. Like I said, he lands the plane. Now, now, you know, this is way back in the 70s. So he tells the people, land the plane. I'm pretty sure it was Las Vegas. Kicks all the okay. passengers off. Tells the people on, uh, you know, at the airport, give me $100,000. And I'll get the, I'll release the passengers. They do. They give him $100,000 in a briefcase. He goes back up in the air. He's going to fly to Seattle, right? Midway right. through, he jumps out of the plane. With a parachute. Never to Leaving be found Leaving the plane again. completely unattended? Yes. Yeah. Well, no. The, the, the airline people were still on the plane. He kicked the passengers off, but he kept the airline people on the plane. Okay. You know, okay. the pilot All right. and, and the stewardesses, right? Okay. So he he uh, forces the, uh, the, the ladder down mid-flight, has this uh, miniature parachute, jumps out of the plane with his $100,000 in a briefcase, never to be found and heard from again. So the debate over the last 50 years is two. One, did he survive? Uh, because he apparently it was over like woods and it was freezing cold and rain and people were saying, nah, there's no way he could have survived. But then, then they found the parachute and they found some of the money which he buried for some dopey reason. So he clearly survived the, the, the fall. And now the, wow. for the last 50 years, people are trying to figure out who actually was D.B. Cooper. You know, and all these people say, oh, it was me when it really wasn't. You know, people want to be famous and everything else. So, like I said, literally over the last 50 years is who who was the real D.B. Cooper? So I bring okay. this up because latest developments, he had a necktie on, right? And they grabbed the necktie. That somehow or another he left on the plane. And now they got DNA and everything. And now they're trying to figure oh. out where the, the guy was from and everything else. So... Next question, had you got yes to D.B. Cooper, is okay. do you know what Crucible Steel Facility is? Crucible, Crucible Steel Facility. Steel Facility. I don't. In your hometown. Uh, it's in Pittsburgh. Okay. All right. So they tied, pardon the pun, the tie to somebody who worked oh! at that facility. Oh! Time out. Time out. Penguins just tied ding, it with ding, 28 ding, ding, ding. seconds left. 
Three, three. Did it hit? Three, three. Yeah. Penguins oh, tied it. Yeah. Nice. Three, three. So you're live. You're live. It's on you. I'm you live. You got to get the Devils a goal, and you got to get the Penguins more. another goal. Pittsburgh one more. Here we go. Woo. Sixteen to one. Okay. All right, focus, hopefully. focus. Come on, keep keep All going right. with this DB so, Cooper guy. Okay, go. All right, so they got the tie, they got the fragments off the tie, blah, 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 and they got it back to a guy who worked at this facility there in Pittsburgh. So the next question would have been, and now you can put that frame up there, guys. Have you ever heard of Vince Peterson? Now, I know Pittsburgh's a big city, obviously, but right. you're a famous person, lived next to famous people. He's from yeah. Pittsburgh, worked at that facility. Right. Ever hear of Vince Peterson? The, the organist... For the Pirates and for the Penguins was a guy named Vince Lashide. And I think Vince oh. Lashide might have been a, um, you know, like a, a stage name for Vince Peterson. I'm going to take my shot that that was him. Ooh, that would be something. Maybe you know who D.B. Cooper is. fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing $300 million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. Take a little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BB, we'll, get, we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done at Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Coates, the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace and is so smart. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> What did you think when you saw uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down those two plays? When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars had, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression this season. Not a major one, but he, he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
All right, welcome back in game live prime time. Just having some fun there for a couple of moments. Been kind of a weird Thursday here. Let's bring in our boy uh, Cam Stewart. Now he knows every single nickname known to, to human mankind in college basketball. Let me see if he knows who DB Cooper is. Unlike our our, our guy uh, Dave Sharapin. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Cam, are you familiar with the DB Cooper story? I am. When I was a child, Scott, next okay. to sports, my favorite show was Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack. Yeah, uh, like I used to, I used right. to drive my parents nuts. Hey, I saw that guy down the street. She's like, my mom's like, what are you talking about? Like, well, that killer, the killer. He's down the street. It's this guy. Like, because I watched so many murder mysteries, everybody kind of looked the same, right? So, I, I, honest to God, I used to watch that show. Like, I used to tape it with a VHS. Like, I taped Seahawks game. Like, I got Seahawks wow. games on VHS when I'm a kid. Like, I still have the box of them. It's absolutely insane. But uh, yeah, DB Cooper, crazy story, right? With the plane and the money and all the other stuff. Yeah. A lot of people thinking, you know, maybe he faked his own death and he, he could be alive. Like, there's a lot of things that are happening. Very, very rich person. I got to tell you, though, Scott, like, a lot of conspiracy theories with this. A lot of people think he's still around. I don't know. Like, I haven't seen an update from it. But, yeah, just kind of a crazy story, Dave. There's, like, a plane crash and all sorts of stuff. And people believe there's, like, a hidden treasure and all these things that are going along with it. But, anyway, very famous story in the past is the Vancouver Canucks uh, just beat Pittsburgh in overtime. Dave, I saw you. I was wearing your uh. Pittsburgh gear. I'm like, hey, I go, hey, these guys tied it up. I'm on Vancouver, so. At least Marenzi will be in a good mood when we do Lead the show. Lead it over. Yeah. We're all I don't know all winners. Yes. what uh. Vancouver jersey I would get, but I got to get one because I've never had one. I don't know if I go back to the Pavel Bure days or if I go with the there blue with the Trevor Linden. You know what um, I like, Dave? The one where they kind of have the fusion. It's the old, it's kind of that, yeah, that was like more of the Orca whale. But Dave, I think the best one is it's a fusion of old and new. It's the one that, that that black one with Canucks. Yeah, I think it's the Pavel Burry era, but they do a, they did a little bit more. It's the, the the black, the hot like orange. You you know the one I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Basically, yeah, yeah. The one that it's like their retro jersey, but they made it just a little bit newer. That jersey rocks like the black. Yeah. One. Like Stan Smeal, or you get the Big V. Remember Big V, Tony Tanti, and the rest oh, of those guys back in the yeah. day. Used to oh, play Tony Tanti, yeah. Remember Tony Tanti? His brother, oh, Tiger yeah. Z. Yes. Yeah, he, I, he was like our rival. He was like the coach of like every year. I'd be like, oh, here comes Tiger Z, Tanti and the Terriers. Oh. They had the same uniform as the Leafs, and we were the Braves. We were the Blackhawks. So we used to, uh, yeah, we used to beat these guys all the time. But yeah, his brother was a coach in my league in the MTHL, the Metropolitan Toronto Hockey League. So small world, Scott. Small world, buddy. But yeah. Uh, why? So what's up with DB Cooper? You found some money in a in a hidden safe or well, in a they had the latest. Th yeah, they had the latest development on him because they had a tie, a necktie mm -hmm. that he had left on the plane, and yes. uh, you know with all the new technology. Uh, they were able to get some DNA and different things off the tie, and they, they associated the tie with this uh, facility in Pittsburgh. Uh, and then the one guy in particular emerged, uh, this Peterson dude, and I was asking Dave, I said, you know, maybe you live next to this guy or knew this sure. guy. You know, wouldn't that be something like you knew He's who the real DJ Cooper world. was? So. It's got like a secret yeah. room, right? That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dave, you so wish he was living there. Right he guy's wasn't familiar money. with the story. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah, it's I an old story. I, I'm a mur when I'm not watching sports and cartoons, like uh, murder mysteries are my thing. Ever since as a kid, I got into that stuff. So yeah, I've seen all those I love that conspiracy stuff. theory. I'll be too, Scott. That's my yeah. that's my jam. When I've like when I'm all sported out or have a really bad night gambling, that's I revert back to uh, either cartoons for laughter or murder mysteries. I don't know why they're very opposite in the in their approach, but both work for me when I'm all uh, when I'm having. Like the problems. one thing I will say, the one thing that was weird for me, which I was always fascinated with this guy, is he he survives because they found some money. Like he buried yeah. some money. He had a hundred thousand dollars. Why would you bury money in, in sand? They found it and it kind of like washed up and they looked around and they found like $20,000 or whatever it was. It was like, why would you, you, know, you survive this plane crash or not plane crash, but you jump out of a plane, the plane yeah. you know, you, you ask for a hundred thousand dollars and now you're going to bury 20,000 of it for some goofy reason. It's like, so, so I used to yeah, see I the other Dateline like episode. There was like some Wild West guy. And I don't know if Dave knows the story. It was in Nevada. And basically everyone was trying like, he goes, I'm going to, I got so much money. I'm just burying millions of dollars. You go find it. But oh, people yes, die. yes, yes. So people go die on right? their way looking for the money. And then, like, yeah, people are like, dude, you can't it. just do this. Like, you're, you're, you're <laughs> sending people in caves, and they're dying, and they're getting eaten by bears yeah. and scorpions and snakes. It's like, stop sending these people on wild goose chases. Like, oh, man, I thought it was going to be cool. But, no, it wasn't cool at all. But uh, somebody oh, actually found the loot. It's true. Yes, yeah, someone did, oh, like last year. Too. I remember mean, reading that yeah. story. And he was getting sued by somebody else. Yeah, somebody uh, sued like, him, I you're right. They're like, right, we're going to take you to the something. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The guy said so. he lied and all this. Yeah, it's a big anyway. Me and you, Scott, I never knew. Well, we you come over, we, we can watch uh, watch my VSA VHS is of unsolved VHS. mysteries. And, yeah, yeah we get back in the game. But uh, football weekend, guys. Um, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I've been doing a lot of shows, and the one thing that really has perked my interest is I don't know, and I was do do shows with a lot of like real good cappers and stuff. Not one person likes Detroit. Every everybody's on the Rams as a dog. Everybody. Yeah. Like every single really? guy I've done a show with, not one person liked Detroit. Yeah. I like Detroit, but yeah. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, am I missing? Like, I know the Rams are really hot, but I don't know. I feel like I'm just like I'm sticking with Detroit, but it just I've never seen people like love this team so much. Like futures, uh, people love the Rams, guys. Yeah. Yeah. How about tonight, real quick, with the hockey? There's only one game mm-hmm. left. Boston is at Vegas. I'm Belichick retired or parted ways or all this other stuff. The Celtics obviously feeling bummed out. They didn't show up against the Bucks. Um, you know, I got to talk to Peralta tomorrow. And uh, oh, anti Boston day. I, 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 yeah. I kind of hope it's propaganda. <laughs> Holy jeez, two two yes. shots. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Cam? Any any side or total? With the Bruins again, I like Boston. I, I got to be honest with you, Dave. Look, we're transparent on the show. I was on I was on Vegas last night against Colorado, and the whole night I'm just like one nothing oh. Colorado, two nothing Colorado. I'm like, oh. wow, Vegas isn't even going to score a goal for me. This is great. No. And after after you know, it's so hard to maintain it, right, Dave? All the other games we bet them live, we run the table, and then I'm like, eh, and that's what you get for betting Vegas. I'm taking Boston tonight. I think the Bruins. Uh, could be in a spot. I don't know. It's Vegas is gripping the sticks a little too hard. And Boston's coming off that loss against uh, Arizona, who's getting pummeled by the Flames tonight. We talked about the Flames as maybe a play on team. I've learned that about Arizona too, guys. Scott, like a little trend. When they beat a good team at home, their next game, they usually lose. That's one of those things. Like they'll, if they beat a team of Boston's quality or Colorado, they always play these really good teams well at home. And then if they have like a mediocre mm-hmm. team like Calgary stroll in there, they take the night off. That's kind of something I've learned about Arizona. But they've been making people a lot of money this year. So I don't know what you guys are doing with the – I'm taking Boston in the hockey game, college basketball. We took Washington State last night. I don't really have too much on the go. I'm more thinking about NFL Super Wild Card Weekend, to be honest with you, and golf. But, uh, yeah, my guy's one shot back at the first-round lead at 70-1, to one, Dave. He bogeyed a couple holes down the stretch, too. But we almost hit another one. That's the, the, the beauty of the game. Yeah, Aaron Rybread, he's a five-under leader, Jordan Montgomery. So I'm still watching golf in Hawaii, too. A lot of things. Don't get – Scott, don't get involved in golf betting if you've got enough problems in your life. It's something you don't need because you know it's what just I, a, something you'll You know what I want from you, Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I really, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll bet some of the majors and some of the props and some of these things, but give me, I wouldn't have time to ask you last night. I've been meaning to do this. Give yeah. me, you know, one, two, maybe even, even three. Well, you know, a couple of guys that I can bet every single week. I'm going to get about 75 or so to one. And all I have to do is hit them one time. And, I, and I'm going to bet these guys every single week, blanket bet, you know, a young and up and comer that you might think uh, might emerge, and, and uh, I'm going to get decent odds. And if I hit them one time, uh, I'm going to win money for the entire year. You have a couple guys well, like learned, that? I learned, I'll, I'll give you one guy right now, and he's so due. He was 35 this week, Eric Cole. He's a guy that's a 35-year-old. Okay. He won Rookie of the Year last year. But one, no, the thing about Cole is he's always a top 10 and 20. And I tell people, you know, one guy wins a golf tournament. There's 166 guys, so you got to take the top 20s. Hell, Scott, I got Stuart Sink. He's 50 years old, for God's sakes, at, at plus 260 for a top 40. The guy's on page one of the leaderboard right now. They're like, he's not going Ooh. to the senior tour. He's still hitting it with the kids. Like, he's out there dee, 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 in Hawaii just strutting around, making money. So, it's I don't know what it is. 50 is the new, like, 35 for these guys. But Eric Cole is a guy that I would look at. And if you're looking at another guy that's going to win really soon. Corey Connors of Canada is close, but he he just, his putting's a little bit eh, but ball striking's good. And Ash K. Batea, those are the three guys I'm going to give you. He was the PGA Tour Rookie of the Year uh, as a kid. He's he's in his 20s. I think he went to Pepperdine, too. He's a really smart kid, like a uh, very, very bright kid. Ash K. Batea, Eric Cole, Corey Connors. Those are three that I would look out for. All right. Yeah, I'll bet what? that every week. Yeah, like 10 bucks. You know, like I said, oh, looking okay. for like yeah, Monster Rock, like, 50 yeah, to like, 1. Like certain courses are tough, right? Because say it's a long course and a guy doesn't hit it hard. Like this course this week is very good for gambling because it's 7,000 yards. So all these small ball oh, hitters small. that I have, all of them are going to be in contention. If you take a course at 7,800 yards 
and one guy's like driving at 350 like McElroy. My, my guy's like 280. He's 70 yards back on a shot over four rounds of golf. That's going to be tough to maintain. So there's horses for courses, right? But on these 70, like 300 yards and under, there's a lot more guy. It's a better field to bet because more players can win because they don't have to be just long off the tee. Interesting. Yes, it is. That's um, great. No question <laughs> like about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm looking, and I, I don't want to get involved in the golf yet. This is the, until we get a little bit closer to the yep. Masters. I'll do it. But while Super Wild Card Weekend, you're talking mm-hmm. about the shows. You're talking about all this other stuff. Um, just, just give it to me straight, please. I will. Buffalo is going to destroy Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, like uh, I love Buffalo. Uh, I was told yeah, by people yeah. on the show, I know the back door is open at a minus 10, Dave, but I just know the environment, and Mason Rudolph's been great. I just don't know how he's going to succeed, and I, the point that I was trying to bring up to people is they're like, oh, Buffalo plays down to their competition. I know. I, I, I watch them play every week. Like, they're kind of my second favorite team. Like, I always cheer for the Bills. Like, you know, they're, they're the local team around me, but I think Pittsburgh's in a, a bad way. And just a defensive player like J.J. Watt, we, Gabe and I talked about it last night, like five and a half points he makes up. He, he's a special defensive player. If they don't get pressure on Allen, he's going to slice him up. If it's windy, advantage Allen because he throws lasers. Everything. Like, Dave, I am not – I don't care. They posted a 10. You've worked in the book. They could have made an eight and a half or a nine. People still could have took Pittsburgh. It's my opinion that this line – it feels like people are trying to – like you're trying to get Steeler money. You're not getting a cent from me. I like the Bills to win by like 17 to 24 points. That's my opinion. I like the Bills a lot. Yep. Will every team score a touchdown? Minus 130 on FanDuel. No. I worry about the Dolphins. To tell you the I worry about Pittsburgh. I think Dolphins will get a touchdown Both. if they run the ball. Both. Both. Dol- Dolphins and Pittsburgh. And you know what? Tampa Bay and Philadelphia got some issues, too. If you're perfect going into that game, maybe a lot of field goals there. Like, I don't know. The way the yeah. Eagles have been playing, it's, like, it's been pretty gross, guys. So, I don't know. I one thirty, a touchdown every game. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not yeah. gonna bet that, but looks okay. Who else am I taking? I like I like the Packers. I took the Packers plus seven and okay. I got seven and a half before that line went down. My three, I did gold, silver, bronze. I had Packers, Bills, and I like the Lions. Other people like the Rams. I'm sticking to the Lions. I don't care. I think the Lions win this game, but uh, I expect points in that game, Dave and Scott. Don't you? I, I see. Like I, I don't know how that game stays under, even though watch that be the seventeen to thirteen. And a half. But the, honestly, right, Scott, big... the way the Rams play with that Lions D and Lions versus Rams, like touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Like I could see like a 35-31 type of game. I see lots of points, but it's a high total. A lot of ways, both you know, whoever play. loses is yeah. going to get criticized, right? Rams lose. We'll, we'll all make fun of uh, Matthew Stafford. Eh, you go back to Detroit, you can't win. You never could in Detroit. Uh, if the Lions lose, uh, Jared Goff goes back to being Jared Goff. You know, mm-hmm. typical Jared Goff. Can't win the yeah, McCarthy league, so. loses, he's fired! Yeah. <laughs> Cam and Gabe, top of the hour. Later, Thanks, guys. Buddy. Yeah, have a good Don't one. Watch, fun to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing 300 million gross a year in sales. 
practice it, man. We don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. Little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BB, we'll get we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah, Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the Buck. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, your mind. Big 12. Who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done in Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Coates, the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. What did you think when you saw... Uh, Lawrence on third and fourth down, those two plays. When you have a meltdown like the Jaguars had, the clear favorite coming into the season, we all know that, and they choke like they did, and they have this fall like they did, people are going to question what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. He had a regression this season. Not a major one, but he, he was not as good as last season. What's happened to the play calling? Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, in-game live, primetime, wrap it up shop here is uh, one team trying to outdo the other, kind of like with Bill Belichick, uh, you know, making his announcement today after Saban yesterday. I kind of joked yesterday, maybe LeBron James tomorrow, will he'll trump them all. Then we can get Pat Mahomes on Saturday saying, that's it, you know what, I'm married now, I got a kid. Who needs these Super Ooh. Bowls anymore? Let, let me, uh, let, you know, maybe that he would be the one that would trump everybody. Uh UCLA down 10 at the half. Uh, I love the under on that one, down to 128 and a half. And, and speaking of trumping, uh, the uh, we'll start with the Celtics, who lost by uh, 50,000, and the Portland Jailblazers are trying to lose by 60,000. They're down 126 to 67. That's 37, 47, 57. They're down 66 points, if my math is right. Uh, grab them plus 58 and a half. Uh, wow. uh, let's do our producer's pick here, Dave, before let's we uh, leave shop. The boys uh, behind yeah. the scenes, always good. Uh, they got a big uh, play on a football game this weekend. Who do you guys got? I like it. I like it a lot. Ooh, under now, 44 and a half. I like that. Too, yeah. I must now, say. that says, if you see the graphic there, it said Percuter's pick, which that's not his last name. <laughs> it's supposed to be producer's pick, but we got Percuter's, Percuter's pick. pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is to be the segment on the show. Percuter. We'll go. We'll we'll go with. Well, that. this way, Thank if it you. loses, they could say it wasn't ours. It was the Percuters. Uh, you know, he, he, uh, he lives next door. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever works. But I like the play. I like the play. Frigid temperatures in Kansas City. That works for both teams. That's not fun to play in that situation. And they played that game already in Germany. In good conditions, and it was under. So, right. I don't know. I think the number's too high. I was going back and forth with somebody this morning, whose opinion I respect, and I said, why is that not 41? I really thought it right. would be a lot lower. Right. right. Like, with the number, hasn't moved yet. I, either we're missing something. We've got to be missing something, or it's just the wrong number. Better chance of winning. Your Steelers or my Dolphins? Your Dolphins. Your Steelers. Bye. <laughs>